I received an interesting question on the forums about uh, configurations versus equation editors versus uh, parts toolbox, and I never thought about making a comparison video between the two. So thank you for the interesting question. Let's get into it. I thought I'd model something with a reasonable amount of complexity, so I did a threaded bolt, and uh, I made this with the equation editor. Now we have global parameters here. For the purposes of keeping this video simple, I'm leaving out the global parameters for now. And we're only going to talk about equation editor. And uh, what does that look like? Well, when you go to model the bolt, right, first off, you'd go into your equation editor and you'd create a series of variables. Here I've got drive size, effective thread height, H, major diameter, minor diameter, right? I have all these different values. And then as we go into our model, I just hit this little F of X thing and I say, oh yes, I want the circle to be my major diameter. So I select, I can just highlight my major diameter, say okay, and there's my major diameter value. And so if I change my major diameter value in the equation editor, then this dimension changes, right? I could say, open my equation editor and change my major diameter to one. And I say, okay. And then now this equation updates and the circle diameter is now one. And so I'll go back to my equation editor and move my equation back to 0.375 so I don't mess any, anything else up. And we'll deactivate the sketch so we can change these parameters of the part simply by updating the, the numbers in the equation editor. And then as I made this bolt, right, I made a, a chamfered edge and then I made a helical cut and there's we cut the threads in made a second cut that just smoothed out the end there and then i extruded my head i revolved the top and i added a fillet and there's our bolt but since all of these sketch parameters and things are based off of the variables that I made in the equation editor, we can update this. For instance, that right now this is a 3 8 by 24 bolt. What if I wanted it to be 3 8 by 16? Open up my equation editor, and as long as I know what values I'm updating to, I can certainly reconfigure this to be 3 8 by 16. So there's our 3 8 Our minor diameter in a 3 8 by 16 is gonna be something around 0.2970. Our pitch will, of course, be 1 16th or 0 0.0625. Our pitch diameter will be somewhere around 0 0.3. And if I say OK onto that, then we'll re-update the threads, and there it just changed into a 3 8 by 16. Uh, likewise, what if I wanted my threads to be longer? Go to my editor. I can change my can change my uh, thread height here to be say four right and uh, this was even modeled in a way that I can make my effective height and my shaft length the same dimension and it gets rid of that shoulder entirely and you can have the whole thing be a bolt if you wish uh, so th that is really what equations look like. We set these values, and then we add the values into the model. And then if we change the values up here, the entire model updates with those values. So equations give a few good uh, advantages, right? We can reconfigure parts very easily, hopefully as you've just seen, without having to break into all of our history tree and change things manually. Uh, equations apply to these parts in the part environment here. You can also use them in assemblies for things like mates if you want to have a certain mate distance that you want to update or configure. So this will work in both parts and assemblies. It allows you to reference other variables, right? If I open my equation editor, I can see that I made H my major diameter minus my minor diameter and I've defined my major and minor diameter. So you can use the definitions you put on other parts of the part to make a new definition. You can reference your variables to different things. 
So that is equations, right? We have this equation editor, we update the values, it updates the part. Next, let's talk about a spreadsheet part. So here I have a spreadsheet and I have a video that goes through this in more depth, but I have certain parameters, right? Screw size, thread pitch, thread class, major diameter, pitch diameter, minor diameter, thread length, shaft length, drive size. And all these have different values to where every row is unique. And that's very important when making something like this. Every row should have at least one unique value or a unique combination of values. And so here I have some 3 8 configurations of my screw and a 1 half inch uh, configurations of my screw. And so I have all these different ways that I've been able to configure the part. Uh, and so how, what does that look like in action? Well, here in a Libre, if I go to utilities and I can go to add part from spreadsheet. Then I can trace down the spreadsheet that I've made. And then this allows me to specify something like distance and then I can configure exactly how I want the user to specify uh, the inputs here. Make sure that we specify our correct unit and we populate equations. And by populating equations, it takes us to a part and now we have, in our equation editor, all these equations from the spreadsheet. And I can model my bolt step by step with the values uh, of these equations. And what does that look like in practice? I would simply highlight a plane, create a circle, And then I'd click on my equation, and sure enough, here we have our major diameter, just like in the last video. So I insert my major diameter, and so on and so forth. So I can go to extrude, and then I can say shaft length, and the shaft length is filled in, and I start building a bolt based on all of these parameters that I have. When I'm all done, I'll go ahead and save this part, wherever the part library is, and then I can insert it in assemblies. What does that look like? So I'm here in a blank assembly, and I can go to the Alibre toolbox, and there's my part that I saved. I select configure and insert. And here are all of the ways that I can change uh, the parameters of my bolt. So if I place my bolt here, you can see I've got half inch threads and I can change that back to 3 8 and it updates off the sheet. And then I can change my thread length to 3. And so I've been able to easily configure a bolt based on these preset parameters. So let's talk about how this is different, right? Uh, spreadsheet parts are only going to be used in assemblies. They're also meant for a part library where you have all these predefined values like one half versus three eighths, and then you can change your uh, thread pitch if you'd like. All right, so we change our thread pitch there, and then our threads update. So this is for assemblies. This is not for making parts. Uh, that's one big difference. Another big difference is while uh, Alibre has all these equation generators right in the interface, spreadsheet-driven parts you obviously need an external spreadsheet for. Another big difference is as I pull up this bolts and configure and insert, right? It, let's say that if I change the pitch, well, I can always go back and go back to my old pitch. Equations, you enter a value into the equation and it just updates the part, but it doesn't have a memory of what you've done in the past. So 
This allows you to store specific values for all of your uh, different dimensions and things like that. Whereas equations, you just enter a dimension and it updates. There's not a memory there. So let's talk about configurations. So something like a class three bolt, they might have a certain slot shape. So on the head of the bolt, you might see a shape kind of like that. And if we extrude that, so this is very crude, but some bolts have these three marks at the top, meaning they're a class three bolt. And maybe we want a version of this part that has these and a version that does not. Well, here I have configurations and that's really where configurations come in quite nicely. I'll delete that first configuration and I'll come up here and choose new configuration. And I'll make sure that it's active and we'll say, okay. And I might be able to suppress my pattern and my feature. And then if I go to my other configuration and activate, you can see that we have this class three pattern here and we do not in this other configuration. So configurations can help with part colors, right? I might want to make my part color a little bit darker. That's a pretty cool looking bolt. And then I can change one of my numerical values. And if I go back to my other configuration, you can see that none of those changes happened. And so we can, configurations not only let you change dimensions, but you can change appearance, you can suppress and unsuppress features. You can add things that won't show up in other configurations. Again, configurations uh, can work on both the part and assembly levels. And so configurations are for making different versions of a part or an assembly, and they live within the part or the assembly file. Spreadsheet driven parts, of course, the changes come from an external spreadsheet. And in the equation editor, they live within the equation editor file. So I have this image. I actually worked really hard on it. Let's compare uh, some of the things that we have, right? So if you use only the equation editor, then you can put in any variables that will change the parameters of the part of the assembly, and you can reference other variables. Spreadsheet-driven parts is like a uh, extension to the equation editor because now you have a preset library that you can reference from, and this is only used in assemblies, whereas configurations, uh, it'll be used in both parts and assemblies, like the equation editor, but it will also be able to change the color, material type, uh, and other aspects of the part. But regardless, all of these are for creating different versions of the part. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe to the Alibre channel, and I'll see you in the next one.